Hello, hello. Happy Wednesday. I have something. Let's see. Wait a minute. Give me a second here. Is there still an echo? Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Oh, ouch. Okay, I can't, hmm. I don't know why there's an echo over there. I have my sound turned off on my iPad, but let's see here. Uh, it's not letting me go completely off. That's bizarre. And it says the mic is muted, but why would I still get some kind of an echo in there? Where's Diane? All right, we have a couple other things of housekeeping. I hooked up. I might have to turn off the thing with me. I'm, I may not be able to keep that one going. But let me see this other one. Uh, how to go to my... How do I actually go to the video? I should be able to pop out my chat on a larger screen. I just need to. So, uh, so I guess I need to create another record for extend. Okay. Now I need to find my cursor. Are you with me here? You're not hearing an echo. Okay, so it's just me that's hearing the echo. So I need to find, where's my cursor? I don't know where my cursor is. Oh, oh there it is. Okay, but it is not, oh, because I need to go into another browser. That's why. This is all first time stuff. So hang in there, chat amongst yourselves. I will get faster at that. Boy, so maybe I'm the only one that hears the echo, which means that's going to play back in a replay. Ah. Uh, All right, let me see if I can at least get to where the chat will pop out. Bear with me, guys. I am, some things are working, some things are not working as expected. So, hello Mitzi, hi Mona, hi Janet. Yeah, what I'm afraid of, I can hear in my iPad, even though it's got the mic is muted, I hear a little bit of an echo and I'm afraid that's gonna show up in the recording, but I guess we'll just give it a shot and see. All right, I'm still getting up my other screen. And, I'm trying to navigate two screens at once and it is really, it's hard. Okay, make sure that you are in live chat, everybody. And I wanna pop out chat, which is great, except it's not showing up in my other screen and I don't know, oh, I know what I forgot to do. I forgot to drag it over and that's not working. So hopefully I won't get a bunch of nasty comments saying, you know, why did I do this? Why didn't I get it all right? But uh, aha, success. I wanted to be able to see um, see the chat which I have not been able to see lately. Okay, no. All right, so now I have this, yay. And I can, woo, I can see the chat without my glasses on. You guys, this is awesome. All right, let's see, I keep that away from, okay, that part's good. As long as I don't look at the screen thinking um, that, 
that's where I'm going to see the stuff that I'm doing. <laughs> oh, happy Wednesday. How is everybody doing today? This is really strange. I got my laptop over on one side and then I've got, um, I've got this huge screen in front of me. I'll have to take a picture of it later. There's just one Susan, yes. <laughs> Whew. All right, but the camera may not be positioned correctly. Let's see. You have to, I guess, do it a little differently if you're going to um, have a split screen, huh? Let's see. So is everybody in live chat? I don't know why. Ah, there we go. There we go. All right. So if I want to type my cursor's in the right spot, I can read. Now, what can you actually see of what I'm going to do? Boy, I wish I could put my picture in the screen but not have to see it at the same time. But I guess beggars can't be choosers, right? So where do I need to work so you can see what I'm doing? If I do, if I'm working here. Ah, and is it upside down? It's not upside down, at least. That's good. Ooh, all right. So who's here? I see Mitzi, and I see Janet, and I think I saw Mona. Happy, happy Wednesday. It only took me, what, um, five minutes to get set up? Ah. And I was trying to figure out what I was going to do today. Margaret was telling me, uh, no. Oh, you know what? The chat in... That's kind of interesting. The chat on the iPad is easier to read. Hi, Terry. Huh, I might be able to, hmm. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have to do some tech research. But I needed something that was gonna be simple and wasn't gonna make a huge mess. And when I was cleaning the studio lately, I found this old project. So I thought I would stitch and chat because Margaret Berry was nice enough to tell me, just find something to do with my hands. But geez, I hate that. I wish you could make the screen where you see me. You don't need as much of that. I don't know. Do you like that, or do you want do you want to just see what I'm working on? And I hope I found the right material. And I did not. This is different. So this is not my matching thread, which I thought I had together. That's a little frustrating. So I did finish the cleanup of the studio, and then I promptly made another mess, which you guys knew I was going to do, right? Um, but mostly because I was spreading out stuff that I'm trying to sell, uh, Christmas stuff. I went through all my old Christmas ornaments. I guess that's going to be close enough. We're just going to change colors because there's nothing else I can do. I should have practiced this, right? I'll get, I'll get a comment saying, why didn't you practice this? But I'm going to be ignoring negative comments. Um, I am, I'm making plans for next year. It's good to see me too. Okay, good. I need to, uh, I'll, I'll play around with this after that. I still hear an echo myself. I sure hope that doesn't show up in the recording. And I'm sure it's because the iPad will not let me go completely off. If anybody knows how to completely turn sound off on a um, iPad, let me know. I've got an iPad Pro. And when I push the volume thing down, it goes down, but it doesn't um, it doesn't go completely quiet, even though I've got my mic mute, muted on there. Ah, I don't know. So this was one of my little landscape things that I had done, textile landscapes. And I had, let's see, I had done a few of these last year, I guess. And so I decided this is going to be a good thing for me to see if I can finish up. Because one of the things, of course, I found when I was cleaning the studio was all sorts of unfinished projects. I mean, that doesn't happen to anybody else, right? Um, not that I think I will ever get everything done. Oh, can I tell you about my workshop? I can. So uh, Stop the Starving Artist is a website that is put together by Lennon Bone, L-E-N-N-O-N -N -N Bone. And let's see, well, I'll just, his name, I've got to remember, I can just type, it's right there, so. 
If you search for him on YouTube, you'll find his channel um, and you can, it's easier to search for that and then find the links within his thing. And he's got a lot of free, I mean, his videos are free, of course. And then he's got some free resources that are on his website and you can link to those in any of his, his things. But he uh, offered a one, uh, one workshop called Four Weeks, uh, Stand Up and Stand Out. And the idea is to learn how to be the most authentic you that you can be with your audience, whether it's on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook or in emails or whatever you happen to be doing. And so there are, I think there's like 17 of us in the group and we've got artists, we've got um, musicians, we've got, there's a acrobat. There are several musicians, there are a couple of DJs um, very interesting group of people. And so the workshop is to kind of give us some exercises to think deeply. Hi, Linda. To think deeply about our work and to share our work with other people um, in a way that, you know, that connects us so that our stories connect. And I, the, those of you that Terry's asking because she saw my post on Facebook yesterday, and some of you might have seen it too, was that I was kind of unsettled after the um, session that we did yesterday, we have once a week Zoom calls. And I'm sure he's gonna, this this workshop is so good, I'm sure he's gonna do it again. So you might wanna get on his mailing list, sign up for his newsletter so you can see more of what's going on. But um, the workshop gives us homework, of course. And the first week's workshop, the first week's homework was okay. But this week, the, the goal is to post a series of videos that share our values, that show our values and show them authentically and how we are serving our audience. And I guess the part that unsettled me, um, I did my little, I just did a post, I didn't do a video. Today I did a video, the video that I just posted uh, before I went live. There's one on there about using your stuff. And uh, I think it's called how to save money on your art supplies. And it's actually related to the class. But what's unsettled me is I kept thinking, I'm not showing up authentically. I'm not doing, I'm not doing it right. You know, isn't that something we always do? We fall into this compare game and we're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm not doing something right. And I'm a rule follower. I'm an absolute rule follower. And, you know, when I think about the idea of not doing something right, it kind of freaks me out. You know, I, um, I want to do things right and I want to show up for you guys. And I, I worried that I wasn't serving my audience, even though you guys tell me every week that I'm here, you know, that you love what I'm sharing, but I sort of, you know, I, I fell into the compare game. I was looking at other videos and I was looking at how people were teaching techniques every week and they were doing these really highly edited videos and I know how to edit videos. I don't enjoy editing videos. And I kind of figure at 62 that maybe I've earned the right to pick and choose where I'm gonna spend my time, which may be counterproductive to the idea of growing a business. I, you know, you, you think about being in business and you think, well, there are certain rules to follow. There are, you know, um, ways to present yourself to the public. And then you, you fall into the YouTube trap and you're looking at what everybody calls vanity numbers. You know, how many subscribers do I have? How many views do I have? Am I going to be earning any AdSense money? You know, and I don't deny, I've never denied that that's part of my business model is to earn passive income from YouTube as well as the income I make from my Etsy digital sales, as well as the income I make from selling my finished art. Um, yeah, you can skip. That's right. You can always skip through the unedited videos whenever you want to. And there's a goof in the one that I just posted. And I did not even for a second feel, okay, I lie. For a few seconds, I was compelled to go back and edit it and fix it. And then I thought, no, I'm not. This this is me. And so I just sort of, um, oh, you like that I involve you and not talk at us. Okay, thank you. That's really good feedback. I just, uh, I, I started to doubt myself, you know, and when I was looking at the homework and I'm thinking maybe I'm not giving my audience what I need to give them in order for me. I mean, in order for me to grow a business, I have to give you guys something of value. 
And that doesn't mean that, you know, every time that you see something that you're going to buy it. That's not what it's all about. It's not about me always putting something out here and say, bye, bye, bye. It's about uh, you getting value from just hanging out with me. And that might grow into other things. Maybe, you know, a year from now, I'll post something that you like, or maybe there'll be a kit that comes out that you like. But I just started to doubt that I was serving my audience. Oh, hi, Scribbles in Time. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. I appreciate that so much. Hey, Tanya, you're on the bus going home and you see, yep, I'm here. So the conclusion I came to yesterday after chatting with um, a friend, Donna Phillips, who's got the Facebook group and the YouTube channel, uh, Junk Journal Ideas, and she is just a wonderful ball of energy and a dear friend, and I love her so much. And she kind of reached out to me, as well as another friend from my old writing life and who is also an artist, and she's a coach, Kelly Ramsell. And I'll have to put Kelly's link in there, too. Um, but the thing that dawned on me after talking with both of these friends is what I was most worried about not showing up authentically and what I was hearing from other people in the class about how they were struggling with this and how they were feeling very vulnerable. And I thought, I'm already there. How cool is that? I am already there. I'm already doing it. And so I was making things, I think, I think, I mean, and you guys are telling me maybe I'm on track. I was making things more difficult than I had to because I was already doing naturally uh, what they were trying to teach us how to do. And it's not to say that I can't improve because we can all get better at stuff, but I realize I have the advantage over a lot of the other people in this class in that, um, well, number one, I'm, I'm pretty sure I am the oldest person in the class by probably 20 years. But I, you know, when I was writing and I was, well, when I was writing, you can't sell a book that you don't write with authenticity. And then when I went out to speak, you know, you can't be a successful speaker if you are not speaking with authenticity. And when I taught in the, the prisons, when I was teaching poetry to the kids that were in lockup, you know, you can't teach poetry if you're not showing up with realness and authenticity. So I guess I was just really freaking out yesterday that I was doing everything wrong and instead of turning around the way I was looking at things and thinking about how, you know, maybe I'm doing some of this stuff right. Maybe I'm already on track. And like I said, we can always improve, but maybe I don't have to work quite as hard as I thought I did. And it's just, it's a choice. It's my style to do unedited videos most of the time. I do edit the ones on the copyright um, free images. I do edit those and some of the other stuff like the Pinterest in, uh, video, but for the most part, I don't edit. And that's just my style. Uh, I choose to, to use my time differently. Other people love to edit and, and they go off on that and that's great. That's right, Linda. It gives me 20, I'm 20 years more wiser. And I could be wrong, but I don't think after looking at the pictures, I'm pretty sure that, you know, these people are all the age of my kids, which just kind of gave me some perspective. It wasn't bad. I feel like I need to change the angle of what this camera is. Let's see. What if I do this? Is that, nope, wrong way, huh? <laughs> I don't know where the camera is on the iPad. No, nope. I'm not making it better, am I? Oh, there we go. Okay. It's always going to be at an angle. Sorry. Um, yeah, it just, it, it's just a change of the way I'm looking at things. Instead of looking at what I was doing wrong, which is always so much easier to do, you're right, than the positive. Uh, I need to look at what I'm doing right and the fact that I already know how to show up and be authentic. And then the other thing I heard, um, one, of the other, one of the guys in the group, he's a DJ, and he was talking about how he wants to do something different and in a lot of ways, it's stuff that hasn't been done before. You know, he's there's a lot of other DJs putting themselves out there and, and trying to build their community. And he, you know, he was gracious enough to share the links to all those different people. But he wants to do something different and it hasn't been done before. And the trouble with doing something that hasn't been done before is that there are no rules in place, you know, and for rule followers like me, it's like, oh, okay, I want to go out here and just kind of, you know, yak about my art. And it's not just junk journals, it's all kinds of art. And it's not, um, it's not necessarily everybody's cup of tea. But you know, I don't see a lot of people doing the kind of stuff that I want to do. 
And so because I can't compare, which is good, I mean, because we shouldn't compare, but because I can't compare, I don't have any way to measure whether I'm on the right track or not. So that's a lot of internalization. And that's kind of what this class is about, is just to kind of get us to think more. Um, Lenin's philosophy is that most creatives, whether you're an artist or a musician or a dancer or an acrobat, most creatives don't value their own work. Let's see, I'm sorry, I'm moving out of frame here. They don't value their own work nearly enough. And I know that's the case with me. So I'm just trying to learn how to value my work more and at the same time figure out how to make that a business that works for me. So that's the long story about the, the workshop. I don't know if you have any questions, ask me. <laughs> oh, Janet, yeah, you missed all the good stuff, sorry. Yeah, I, I saved it all up for when you were gone. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I'm going to try next year if you saw my last video my, my next year goal is to try and not buy anything there's no reason I should have to buy anything uh, I do have some supplies coming in in the next couple weeks but I shouldn't have to buy anything not even glue I don't think I provide a sense of community which is especially critical now thank you Terry that is very kind and that is exactly what I was hoping for because when I create community for you it creates community for me and I need that as much um, you guys know I'm an introvert I don't like to go out and about I'm very very happy being here at home and so having you guys to hang with every week is just a big sense of community for me What is the project I'm working on? Oh, it's this little um, this little landscape thing. Let's see, how do I get that in camera right? I guess that's it. This is about five by seven, and these are just little strips of old fabric that I have uh, tacked down. And I think I'm going, I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but it looks like my idea was I was going to stitch all of this all the way around. And then I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but I have a bunch of them laid out. I probably have about 10 of these laid out. Oh, Tunder, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I kind of, once in a while, I'm thinking, I wish we were all in a Zoom room together. Hey, Penny, happy to see you here. Good morning to you. Hi, Mary. So this one was just kind of neutral. And I've got some in some brighter colors. I've got some that are kind of replicating a sunset. Um, oh, Jude's missing today. I might have wanted a different needle, but it was really fun to put some things away in the studio and get excited about working on things again. And I want to do some more covers like the giveaway books that I did. Uh, I definitely have that on my list, but boy, it'd be nice if I could just have this to work on when I'm watching TV in the evenings. Oh, you're right, Victoria's missing. Wondered that she could be out doing some Christmas stuff. Or she could have collapsed from the end of the day after doing a bunch of Christmas stuff. So who's working on what? Janet, are you working on your mermaid stuff or are you working on your heart? You posted a beautiful heart on Instagram the other day. Linda, did you make a bunch of Christmas ornaments this year? I'm trying to remember what I saw posted recently. Terry, tell us how your sales are going in your little shop that you have set up. If I'm smart, and sometimes I am, I'm gonna tie that off now. So here's the ugly back of, let's see, can you see it on a little focus on there? Cause it's all the same color. I am not neat and tidy on the back of these. So don't feel any obligation that you have to be neat and tidy. Penny, what are you working on? Oh, you're doing slow stitch ornaments, Linda. Lovely. I'm looking forward to seeing some photos of those. Whoops. Scissors, kind of important when you're doing stitching, huh? Oh, you're making Christmas presents. Hey, Lorna, you're stuffing your face and you're not sharing. You better not be eating goodies like sweets and stuff. 
Let's see. Oh, this means I'm going to have to thread a needle on camera again. Well, that's good. If you're not starting your journal until after Christmas and you have time to ponder it, and that's always good, too. Good to ponder. All right. Take a bet. How many tries will it take to thread the needle? Ooh, you sold a set of original rooster and hen paintings for $130. That's terrific. Congratulations. Chicago Mix Popcorn. That sounds awesome. Mm, I love popcorn. Penny is making Christmas cards and finishing up some happy mail. I have two more packages to mail. Got to get that stuff together and... I am really anxious to have things done. I don't know that I want to make French dance. Maybe I want to go back over here and do some do some more of these stitches. How many times will I stick my finger? A lot. <laughs> so I thought I'd feel really good when everything was all uh, cleaned up around here, but mostly I just feel overwhelmed about starting a new project and making a mess. That's why I wanted to do something easy. Oh man, this is really a different size thread. Hmm. I think that's going to bother me. Has anyone tried self-threading easy hand thread, thread hand sewing needles? I have not heard of those and I would love to hear more of those. Please, please, please. Let's see if so, of course, of all the threads I have out here, I probably don't have one the right color. Am I using white? But I'm thinking I must have embroidery floss in there and not this other thread that I thought it was. Colonial knots are nice, too. All right, let's see. I think this is thread, and so we're going to cut this off because it's going to bother me if it's not the same weight on this particular one. Normally, you know, changing weights is kind of exciting and it gives you a different look, but on this, I really don't want to do that. All right, I'm, I already lost my needle. That was not the needle I did, there we go. Let's figure out what thread we have here. Oh boy. Um, I would have to look up a colonial knot to make one now because I haven't done one in a while. But if you um, if you YouTube colonial knots, they're uh, it's just a nice way to add something different. Let's see. Well, of course, none of these are the same. <laughs> That's what happens when you leave a project for a long time. You uh, you misplace your threads that all go with it. It should have been what was in here. Live stream with Christmas bulbs. That sounds interesting, Tender. Huh. Well, heck, we might just have no choice but to change colors, huh? We'll consider, consider this intentional. So if I'm going to change colors... Maybe I do something that is definitely darker. It looks like I use something different on each one. I think that's what we'll do. We will intentionally change to a darker color, and it will look like something we meant to do, right? <laughs> that's my story, and I'm sticking with it. Isn't this cushion awesome? I saw Carol Martine had one of these on her desk when she was doing some slow stitch stuff, and I had to go. She said she'd found it on Etsy, and I went searching for it. And it was, I don't know what it would cost to ship it to you, but man, it was awesome. I like the sound of being a bowerbird a lot better than saying I was a pack rat. So I'm going to call myself a bowerbird too. I just like to save all these things. But I don't want to hoard them anymore. And that's, that's what the video I just posted. And I mean, you saw I had an old video about not hoarding your stuff. I wonder if this one, the point is, that's too big. I didn't bring the rest of my needles out either. So I was only somewhat prepared. I was just really wanted to get the other camera set up. But I'm very much concerned about uh, the, hearing it back twice on here. I don't know why. 
I hope it won't be on the recording, but if it is, oh well. <laughs> we'll just have to tell people to be nice. Yeah, Janet, it's hard to explain. And I, if Jude was here, I would have her grab a net. <laughs> you loved all my fabrics and you what I'm tired of. Yeah, it's, I think what's hard for me is um, looking at the big pieces of commercial fabrics because I realized when I'm looking at other people's slow stitch projects and they're using small pieces of commercial fabrics, I love the looks of it. So I need to, I didn't want to make a knot. Um, I need to maybe cut some up into some smaller pieces and then, you know, get rid of them. But I do love, you know, this is, this is a piece that I had dyed. Boy, again, trying to get the camera in here. This, uh, that's the backside. Um, but this is very hard to stitch through with the rest. So, and I'm not really sure what I'm doing with it, but that's, I, I get real excited when I'm thinking about stitching on materials that I've dyed. You know, these are some more, oh, there's some more needles. Let's put them in here. Versus using a little piece of something that was commercial. These are some of my little, and I like it better when I'm looking at a small piece. Oh, you can't see that, can you? There we go. Not playing back twice on that. Okay, well, that's going to give me hope. So when I look at a little piece like this, I love it. But when I look at this material on a big piece, I love it less. This is one with some tea bag and fabric. And then even the backing, it's like this is, you know, it's nice to have the neutral, but maybe if I had some eco prints on it. You know, these are all the dyed fabrics. I'm gonna figure this out. I'm gonna figure this out. <laughs> This needs some more, but this is what I want to use for backing. This needs some more dye on it. What else is in here? Just solids and thread. I should finish this too. This would be nice to finish. All these things to finish. Yeah, the, the hoarding, it's, um, the hoarding is, it's like a stop button in our brains, at least for me. Uh, when I look, you know, when I put everything away in the studio and I had, you know, the island was cleaned off, this desk was cleaned off, my painting desk was cleaned off, and I thought, oh, I'm going to be so motivated to get to work. And instead, what happened was it made me feel, um, well, it made me feel sad that I'd spent so much money on stuff when I wasn't done, obviously. You know, I hadn't been using this stuff up. And it made me want to not make big messes. And then I started looking around and thinking, I don't even have a place to put, if I finish some big canvases, I have no place to put them. I have no wall space to hang them. If I finish journals, I have no place to put them. I'm gonna be putting them in bins and in the garage if they don't sell. And it's ridiculous to have so much excess, you know, time to, time to use it up, you know, in, in materials. Penny, I know, me too. I'm getting worse as I get older. And yet, in some ways, it's getting easier to get rid of stuff that I know I don't enjoy playing with. You know, when I did that, gosh, it's been about six months ago, and I sold off a bunch of my supplies to a couple of friends, and it was very uh, freeing for me to get rid of things. I don't use a lot of stamps. I still kept a lot, and I'm going to try some things with stamps this year. But I, um, I had bought oh hundreds and hundreds of stamps and stencils. I, I would look through them the other day, and I like them. And I keep thinking, well, yeah, I could do some mixed media with them. I wasn't able to get rid of them the last time, but I do think I need to sell off, especially the big 12 by 12s. I don't tend to use 12 by 12s except for a few when I'm dyeing papers, you know, coffee or tea dyeing papers, and I like to put a stencil on them there. Um, Mona, yeah, let me figure out where to go on here to make you an admin. Let's see. How can I do that? Uh, I got to go back. Let me get my cursor back to the other side. And okay, Mona, you should be able to post the link now. 
Thank you for finding that for us. Let's see if I can get my... I'm getting the hang of this two monitor thing. Maybe. <laughs> All right, you should be able to post that link now. And if you have a link on Colonial Knots that you could post for people, that would be awesome. Oh, I made this thread so long. This is probably going to get me into trouble. Every time I have a thread that's too long, I end up with a lot of knots. Time for water, Susan. Water would be good. I like bullion knots, too, which is where you wrap the, th the, needle, the thread around the needle. Interesting, it was supposed to say that you were a monitor, a moderator now, but I don't see it. No, it does say you are a moderator. I don't know why it doesn't show it the right way, but. So I have a question for all of you. My husband is in a meeting right now. Can you hear his voice in the background? Let me know because that will let me know whether um, I can do videos while he's in a meeting or if I need complete quiet. So I can hear him talking, but if you guys can't hear, you can hear a bit too. Yeah. That's what I was afraid of. Oh, well, I don't mind it for the live, but if I'm doing videos, you don't hear it. So, yeah. So I'm not so sure I should be doing videos with, I mean, with the lives, it's one thing, but if I'm just doing a regular video that I want to share something with, I'm going to have to wait for quiet. You guys are used to the dog barking, but probably not so great to have him talking business stuff in the background. <laughs> not what he's saying, just his voice. Yeah. Maybe I'll ask some sound guys if there's a way I don't know. I'm thinking about maybe I'll try some soundproofing. Like if I can get some, the trouble is, is our, where I sit and where he sits, we're really only about 20 feet, if that apart. And his uh, face is right there at the door. So I'm wondering if maybe if I had some soundproofing foam on the backside of his door, if that would make a difference. So we'll have to test that out again. I am slow, slow. When they say slow stitching for me, this is really slow stitching. <laughs> hey, Tiffany. Hello. Tiffany is also in the awesome workshop that I am taking right now. And it's, uh, boy, it's really challenging our inner minds, isn't it, Tiffany? <laughs> they were asking me about the workshop earlier. What are you working on today? Hey, Shelby. Are you at work, Shelby? Are you being good? You and Janet. Oh, Victoria, I thought you had me on the calendar. I'm hurt. I'm crushed. I only cried for five minutes when I didn't see you here in the audience. <laughs> we were asking about it. Everybody was asking about you, saying, where were you? Jude, I know she's got a lot of stuff going on. She isn't always here. You're having lunch. <laughs> lunch with Shelby today. Tiffany, yeah, never been so in touch with my emotions in my life. That's what Lennon does for us. And I tell you guys, even if you can't take a workshop with Lennon, you absolutely need to go check out his videos. You absolutely need to do that. Because um, I, I just started stock. Well, I had seen him on video creators and I went and checked out his personal channel a little bit and then I was obsessed. I had to like watch every single video he had ever posted and some of them a couple of times and started sharing them with people. Um, I just eat this kind of stuff up, you know, anything that's going to help me be more creative, anything that's going to help me um, stretch myself as a creative person. And I, you know, the, the kind of stuff he talks about is the kind of stuff that when I was writing and speaking, you know, I would give talks on how to find the courage to create. So it's really resonating with me going back in time. 
No timer came up and you forgot what day of the week it is. That's your story and you're sticking to it, huh? So, yeah, I have not taken the 30 days. No, I haven't. I've, I've kind of been in a para, paralysis about spending money on me. And I know everybody can relate to that. Hey, Nana, I'm so glad you're here today. I hope you're having an awesome Wednesday. You know, I'm struggling with YouTube in general, just in, I don't know, how to, um, how to be in business without being so focused, you know, with that hustle mentality that I lose the joy in creating. This is one of my st slow stitch projects, Nana, that was hanging around in the studio last year, and I really need to finish it up. You didn't miss too much. Now, we only talked about you for five or ten minutes, that's all. <laughs> and it was all good. Well, you left the house with fresh air. I think we're getting ready to go into another lockdown. For those of you that don't know, I am in California and the county where my in-laws live, this dual screen thing, I, I got to practice on that. I got to get my camera set up in a better spot. Let's see if I move this closer. Aha, we are, although you can see the camera. Um, this, this is a little easier for me. The county that my in-laws live in, which is where we would normally spend Christmas, um, they are in a lockdown now until January. And I think, thank you, Nana. I have a feeling that we're going, well, it says that we're going to go in and on Monday, but I think it might even be sooner. Yeah, Tiffany, that, that's the whole thing, is to fall in love with the creating. And for me, I was getting so focused on, you know, is my thumbnail right? Is, you know, well, I, I don't like to edit. I don't enjoy it. I know how to do it, but I don't enjoy it. Um. And, and it's, I'm in a different place, I think. When I started writing, would I, what you, my camera set up, Shelby? Did I miss something? Would I, you, me, show you, tell you? Let me know what you meant there, Shelby. I, I missed part of the question. Oh, show you. Um, Oh, let's see. I wonder if I could do it this way. Let's see if we can make my phone work for me at the same time. If I, that's not going to work very well. Let's see if I can. So right now I've got that big monitor in front of me. And I've got my iPad, which is focused on me. Bye, Tiffany. Take care. Thanks for stopping in. The ring light is new. I've got some other lights that I need to get set back up again. So that's just what's right in front of me. And then, let's see if I can get this one. Ah. Uh, then off to the side, I've got my laptop and my microphone. And I'll take some pictures and post them later for you, Shelby, or do a little video on it. Whoops, just lost my needle. But I think uh, I need to talk to some people that are doing, oh, pull what, to, oh, the, the phone, sorry. Let's see here, what did I have? Let me get this to turn. Okay, there's that. The camera. Oh, the camera is... I'm sorry, Shelby. And then... Ah, there we go. Nope. Let me take some still shots and I'll post them and tag you later, Shelby. It would be a little bit easier, I think, to do that.
Yeah, you need to be safe. I think a lot of us are going to have some different Christmases this year. So they said, our county said that um, Monday that we'll probably go into the other lockdown, but I'll be surprised if it waits that long. I'm kind of surprised that they've waited already this long. Oh, you're looking at cameras? Well, I've got a um, Logitech 920, and it's only because I've had it for a long time. I went looking again for cameras. I'm still not 100% sold on what I want to do with cameras. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to sell all my old Nikon gear and then looking at a mirrorless camera setup. I get a little frustrated with the clarity on the Logitech and I don't know, I'd like to maybe not have to use the other Logitech uh, connection thing, but I don't know, I, I get uh, analysis paralysis when I'm thinking about looking at cameras and tech stuff. I bought lights, new lights, and have had them for a month and haven't gotten them set up yet. And part of my trouble with my setup is it's right here in the living room. You know, we just, we have a small house and I have to, you know, record in here and I have to make it work. And I don't want to be looking at so much tech stuff, you know, all over the house all the time. So trying to contain it and make it still look nice for me, because it bothers me if everything looks crazy all the time. I don't know. Oh, Victoria, I'm anxious to get it. Thank you. I've got some loose stitches here. This is probably going to bother me when I'm done that this is a different color, but hopefully once I get an, enough of it. Let's see. Something here is loose. needs to be. I can kind of do something with it back here. I'll worry about that when I'm done. So Lorna, did you get all those trees decorated? You were doing so many trees. I definitely think if I if I just sit down and work on this in the evening after you know dinner, we do our TV time. This slow stitching is definitely the thing for me to be doing during that time. I know, very greedy. I mean, when you tell me you're going to send me something, then I get like all anxious. I've got packages coming from Etsy, and I'm like, I want them here right now. They say they've shipped. I have something coming from um, Scotland, which I'm super excited about. Only eight trees? Wow, Lorna. Do you have a different theme on each tree? Shelby, I'm thinking again about cameras and I'm thinking about cell phones. And I tell you, the people that are doing things with their iPhones, I'm not a Mac person, but it makes me almost want to, to have a Mac phone or Apple phone just for the ease. But I'm kind of eyeing, I have a Samsung and I'm kind of eyeing the uh, latest Samsung. My trouble with doing anything on my phone is that it tends to cut out in a live stream. So what am I making, Nana? This is just a little wall hanging. This is about five by seven. Whoops, let's see, can I move it here? So it's about five by seven. It's just kind of a landscape wall hanging. Um, doesn't look like as much now because it's not all stitched down, but just a simple little thing. Well, I will be surprised because I have a bad memory and I'll forget that anything is coming. Whoops, did I get to the end? No. This almost looks like I don't need another line there. I'm going to go, hmm, not sure how to. White Victorian in the living room and dining room. Okay, I'm going to have to go look on Instagram then to see. No, it's just a wall hanging. Um not everything I make is for a journal. It could be a journal cover. You know, I'll probably sell it just loose. Hey, Aurora. Hi, hi, hi. So happy to see you here. I am live every Wednesday, um, 12 to 2, my time here in California. 
What are you working on today? So this could definitely go on a journal cover, but I'm not going to make it into a journal cover. I'll probably just sell it loose because then whoever buys it can do whatever they want. Whoops, I just made that stitch way too little. Not happy with that one. And I really just want to finish things up. Oh, thank you, Mona. I appreciate that. We were talking about colonial knots earlier. There's the. Did you post the link on the the self-threading needles, Mona? Whoops. Those of you that have wanted to learn how to make digitals, Aurora has got um, a series that she's showing you how to do a lot of the stuff, and you can go check out her channel, Texas Craft Lover. And I have some new locations for you guys. I will be doing a video of a couple new places to look for digital or look for images. And I'll hopefully be doing that maybe this weekend. You need the elves to come finish journals. How many are you working on at a time? Lorna is a pro at working on multiple journals at once. Does anybody else here um, stream or record with two um, like this, like I'm doing here with the split screen, because I'm going to be looking for tips on how to get better at this. And uh, where, Where's Diane? I need Diane to show up. Ah, thank you, Mona. Appreciate it. Victoria's elf has been naughty. <laughs> Yeah, overachiever, I hear you. I think that's why I have so much stuff, is that I really, in my head, think I'm going to make a gazillion things in the amount of time. And maybe when I was 20 or 30 or 40 or maybe even when I was 50, I could have done that. But nowadays, not so much. Yeah, a lazy overachiever. Well, Lorna, you exhaust me sometimes just looking at how much you get done. Okay, so Daisy does it too. I might check with her. I mean, maybe it's just a matter of me playing with it and I'll check the recording on this because I'm very much wondering about how to silence the iPad completely. But at least I got it set up. You know, I told you guys I was going to do this like a month ago and at least I got that part set up. And I'm really loving the fact that on this big screen in front of me is just the chat. So I can finally see the chat without my glasses on because I can't wear my glasses when I'm working this close. And then I was turning back and forth to the laptop all the time. So I'm really loving that I can see the chat, nice big letters. And that's the only thing that's on the screen, big screen just filled with chat. Yeah, lazy overachiever, that's a pretty good, but I mean, isn't that the whole thing? You get retired. I mean, you reach a certain age, you get retired and you... Um, you want to work at a different pace. Although I find if I'm doing something I love to do like this, I can keep going at it and I lose total track of time. Or like when I did the, um, the wall hanging last week, you know, I started on it and I hit record and I'm thinking, you know, it won't be that long to do a voiceover on it. And then I looked up and it was like three hours had gone by and it's like, well, I can't post a three hour video. I, I need to cut this thing way down. But if you if you're doing what you love, what you love, the time just seems to go very fast. I would let, let's see, find a place for my water where I'm not having to be an acrobat to get to it. So I feel like part of my problem lately is that I still don't have everything set up exactly right. And I think when you have, you know, sort of like organization, if you've got everything in its place, then you feel like you can, um, you know where it goes and you're not quite so stressed. You know where to find it when you need it again. And I stress out because I don't necessarily know where everything goes. But I'm working on it. And part of it's because still there's just so much stuff. It's time to get rid of some of that stuff. Enough material, except that it wasn't, you know, when you looked at what I was doing, Penny, it wasn't quite enough for, you know, there wasn't enough meat in it because so much of, as you know, when we're creating is just pondering choices. And 
it's hard to, uh, I don't know, you just me staring, staring at something for a while. That's not very interesting. Yeah, and then the fast forward didn't work the way I thought it was. Oh, yeah, it was quite because I kept talking so much on the voiceover. So then I got done and the voiceover didn't match up with the film. That was quite a process. So I'll get better at it. I just I'm sad that I'm not doing you know, I wanted to do a lot of craft with me videos. And with my husband working from home, it's just not working with the schedule. And so I just need to figure out a different way to make it work. And Penny, the editing that you put into your videos, holy cow. You have just got so much talent for editing and so much energy for editing. And I just, um, I'm sick of the project by then. It's like, no, I got to go off and do something new. If I edited all my videos, I would, I would hit burnout so fast if I did that kind of thing. You know, maybe if I would just did it for, um, you know, journal flips, maybe that would be different. Aurora, what do you use for editing if you do any kind of editing? I use Filmora, and doing the voiceovers is very easy uh, as far as the technique. Not that I'm good at it, but, the, you know, learning how to do it was very easy. I just need to remember to uh, give myself more, well, probably edit the film first. What I did was I tried to edit the film and the audio at the same time, and that's why I ended up with way more audio that I needed and I didn't want to cut any of it because I was saying good stuff. <laughs> so I would do the video and then I would uh, edit the video to the length I wanted and then I would do the voiceover. But I like Filmora, it makes it very easy to do that sort of thing. All right, thread the needle. This thread is definitely very old. It's already, it's just a single thread, but it wants to fray. Well, I'm taking a couple of classes in addition to this workshop on personal growth for me. I'm taking a um, class with the UK artist, Alice Fox. Uh, you might know her book, um, I think it's called Rust on Textiles or something like that. But if you look up Alice Fox in the UK, she's a fabulous artist. I'm taking a class with her and I'm taking a class with the Australian artist, uh, Tara Axford. And they're both about nature and using natural materials and just really exciting for me to be working with two artists that I admire so much and learning from their processes. <laughs> Lorna, take care. Get some rest so you can finish those journals and relax and have a good holiday. Flashback. Okay. Yeah, I've not heard of that one. Yeah, you know, and any like anything tech-wise, it's just taking the time to learn the new things. Um, I've been learning how to make little uh, GIFs, you know, the little animated GIFs. And I put one, if you saw my recent post on my community page, I put one down there. I've done a couple that are on my community page. Because they're a fun way to kind of draw attention to your post without, you know, making this big old long post. And uh, you can take it from, you know, an old video. But every time I have to go look up the directions. <laughs> so I'm still not quite there yet. The, the most recent one I did was just with two, video, two um, still images. Because I didn't even bother recording a video. But I think that's kind of a fun thing. And I just, I used to love learning that kind of, I still like learning it. But there's just not enough hours in the day for all the stuff I want to do. I spent like an hour yesterday just literally sorting leaves and twigs. And uh, stuff that I picked up in the garden. And I've got to go out and gather some more stuff for the class with Alice. I get done with this and my the my fingers are all um, cut up because I continually stab myself with the needle and I'm not great at using a thimble. Uh, 
So Victoria, is your house all decorated? I saw your little elf in a few places. Is the rest of your house all decorated? I know you said you were having trouble getting into the spirit a few weeks ago. Hey, Nettie. Oh, you're having a hard day. Come in here and let us give you some love. Nettie is one of the first people to help everybody else feel better when they're having hard days. Oh, yeah, I just uh, the, the Fussy Cut Leaves is a new kit, and I've got, um, there's actually going to be th two or three more leaf kits going up. Hmm, that looks almost like I should start over at the end again, so that's what we're going to do. Nettie is one of those people that, um, like I said, when, when she hears somebody's having a bad day, she jumps right in and tells them all the good things that, that they do to make her feel better. So I would love for everybody just to give Nettie a big old virtual hug. I love it when she has time to show up in here. I know she homeschools and that's difficult. And the holidays have changed things for everybody and that makes things difficult emotionally. <coughs> More water. So just the living room. Okay, so it's all done. Do you feel better about it now, Victoria, now that it's all decorated? I felt very odd. Um, I, we, we brought in 12 boxes of Christmas things to, uh, to sort through. Yeah, the fussy cut leaves would stitch down well on the wall hangings. I've got some things I want to play with on that. I just literally haven't managed to fussy cut my own leaves yet <laughs> Elvis is into everything but we brought down these 12 boxes of Christmas things and I hadn't looked in the Christmas boxes I think but once uh, since we moved here six years ago our last house was really big love you too Nettie you know that sister from another mister. As soon as you started putting things up, the missing Christmas spirit flared up. Good, good, good. I had the opposite thing happen. I, I brought all this stuff in and I knew we had more stuff because we don't have a huge house anymore. And we had more stuff. And I had been hoarding this Christmas stuff like craft supplies. I've been hoarding it for years. Sharon, hey, yes, we can see me. <laughs> Whether that's good or bad, I don't know, but you can see me. I still got to work on perfecting the setup, but it's a start. And my kids have already gotten the Christmas things that they want because, of course, they're raised and off on their own. And I don't know, you know, there, there's just so much stuff. I was obsessively, obsessively collecting Christmas things for years. And we haven't decorated, we decorated the first year we were here, and I don't think we've decorated since just because we were always had some kind of construction going on. And nobody comes here, even when it's not COVID time. Nobody comes. And so I started going through the Christmas things thinking, why am I keeping these things? Um, yeah, maybe some for my grandson. He's 16. But I um, so I sorted out my Christmas village last night and took pictures of it all. And I'm going to put it up for sale, all the little miniatures that go with it. And, and then I've got three more boxes of stuff I'm going to try and sell off. And I, I want to go through it again, but at least that'd be some of the stuff to get rid of it. Pulled a few more things for my, my kids, even though they said that they had everything they wanted. And maybe I'll just pack one box for my grandson, label it, and put it up in their storage I don't know. So I'm, um, I used to, I, I guess the, if you see kids, you know, that's to me what the Christmas is just so much fun to decorate for the kids. And when it's just the two of us, it's more, you know, we, we do for us. I might decorate for the birds next year. Maybe that's what I'll do is just do outdoors things. I'm not thrilled with the way this is coming together. Maybe it's just cause I've been away from it for a while. When it's all done, I hope I'll like it more. Let's see. I'm still figuring out the camera stuff. Okay. I'll put some little tape down for me so I know that this is my section. But I'm thinking I'm just going to straight stitch each of these, and then I'm going to do the hills with the French knots. 
and hope that I like it when it's done, right? <laughs> oh, thank you, Sharon. You know, I'd hug you if I could, Nettie. I would. And then we'd, we'd tell bad jokes and puns until we laughed and giggled. And your son came in to ask us, what the heck are you guys doing? What is so funny, Mom? And you just have to tell him, well, Susan's kind of goofy. That's the kind of stuff that happens when we get together. You know, uh, one of the things I love about this community that we're creating here is the way you do all support one another when anybody mentions that they, they need a hug, they need some support. If somebody's got some nasty comments on their videos, everybody's over there to, to you know, give the opposite opinion. So Victoria says, even if the uh, hadn't been for the grandbaby, she doesn't think she would have decorated. Yeah. Hey, Jacqueline, how are you doing? I just, um, I, I think it's the gathering when there's no gathering. And, you know, I when the kids were little, still figuring out where my camera is here. When the kids were little, I used to do a lot of baking. We used to do a cookie exchange. You know, we would bake up cookies and bring plates of cookies around everybody in the neighborhood. But my husband and I aren't doing really desserts much anymore, trying to eat healthier. You started a club. Oh, well, that's good. What kind of a club? Yay, Nettie. That's terrific. You've got a phone holder, so you're going to be able to do crafty calls with people. That's what you need. You need crafty calls to per perk you up. Jacqueline, is it an art club? Are you being able to do more about art? Vancouver Island. Hmm. Journaling. Nice. That's fabulous. It should be a really popular club. How many people do you have that have joined already? Hi, Adele. And there's Jude. There's my Jude. No worries. I'm trying. I'm trying to get the setup dialed in. Uh, Jude, can you um, block somebody for me there? You have 13 students. That's fabulous. Hey, Sherry. Okay, we got a couple people we need to, to get out of here. Let's see here. Sorry, a little housekeeping there. Okay, let's see here. Thank you, Mona. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Oh, Jacqueline, that is awesome that you're reaching out like that. Boy, they're all coming out. Mona and Jude, you guys are going to be busy. What is it? Today's the day, huh? So, Jude, what are you working on today? Let's see.
Hey, Margaret. I'm stitching today, thanks to you. Wow, three trolls in like five minutes. That's a record for me, I think. I've been lucky lately. Whoops, let's see. Sorry, I moved off the camera again. You're making Christmas stockings. Ooh. All right, it still sort of bothers me that it's not the same color thread, but I'm going to try and let it go. Yeah, I, I have been very lucky, and I know that because a lot of people have trouble with them. Um, been very lucky lately and not had to deal with the trolls. So, oh, my goodness. People, this is crazy. So crazy. Trying to boy. So yeah, I'm using two devices. I'm uh, the camera is the way my normal setup is, which is my webcam on my laptop. Whoops, I made a big mess here. And then I have my iPad set up so that you can actually see my face but I'm not sure if the angle's right. I'm going to have to play around with this some more. You'll probably see me do a test message. That's true, a contrasting thread, but I didn't do a super contrasting. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe the next level I'll go even deeper. Oh, I made a mess. hate it when you do that. All right, so we have a big old knot there. How are we going to do this? Um, okay, I'm going to do a cheat. This is why we don't care what the back looks like, right? Because nobody's going to see it. So yeah, and you know, it's doing the two devices is easy with StreamYard. I just hadn't gotten around to cleaning off my desk enough that I could do it. All right, I need to, I'm going to hide this. Well, not hide it so much as I want to make sure that it doesn't loosen up. Yeah, and I'm sure it's because I had way too much thread. You I know, mean, when I have a long thread, I always seem to have problems. Well, Jacqueline, I was happy to see you here. I'm really excited for you about the club. You have fun with it, okay? Pop in when you can next week, maybe. StreamYard is a free browser program that uh, that you can use to stream to YouTube or Facebook or wherever else you want to. And it's it's how I'm streaming now. Yeah, I, I hear you, Victoria, on the small space. Let's, um, and so you can bring in other people, you know, with StreamYard. I could, you know, I could um, have somebody else here with me in a different location and you would see both of us on the screen or you would see three or four of us on the screen. Let's look at different threads. If we want to do something contrasting, let's see how we feel about that. Let's see. I'm sure you guys can see everything. All right. Are you seeing this right where this is the bottom and this is the top or is it reversed? Cause on my screen, maybe, So what, did I just make it upside down? Okay, so th this is normal for you guys. This this is supposed to be the sky. Am I pointing to the sky for you guys right now? Okay, on my screen, it's upside down. So I'm not gonna look at the screen. Victoria, yeah, the tidy up is necessary. All right, let's look at some different colors. Would we like... Okay, so now it's right side up. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. The sky right now is at the bottom. I keep forgetting about this delay. The blue is on the bottom for you. Okay, there we go. All right, so now it's upside down for me, but that's okay. All right. So do we want to go even darker on this? We could go... The rest of this could be in a darker brown. It's kind of a rusty brown. Or, okay, so I just need to remember it's upside down. 
Diane, did I see you sneak in here somewhere? Are you proud of me? I got to the point where I got this part set up. Or I could go, ooh, I kind of like that. Can you see the two colors? Got your eyes wide open. Yay. All right, let's try a third brown. I'm sort of thinking maybe I want that really dark one. Let's see if I can get this up to the screen. And get a little bit more space in there. All right. Whoops. <laughs> of the three colors, what do we think? We've got... Make sure I have them in the same order. Bear with me, folks. The rich brown on the bottom, medium brown in the first. So these two, Sharon's voting for these two. I really like the dark, too. Graduate the colors. Okay. All right. We'll do. So if I've got light here now, let's do the next. We'll do a, see if we've got enough to do. I don't know. This looks so warm, and I think the other colors are cool, so I think maybe not this. I think we only have room for two more colors. So we'll do this. We'll do the... We'll do the dark on the bottom because this seems like a cool brown, and then we'll do this up here. I can work with that. All right, so let's, that means we need to do this color next. Not quite as long, so maybe I don't make a big mess behind the scenes. So I wonder why this is upside down for me. I don't quite understand how the iPad is seeing things, I guess. All right. I read something recently where they said, never, ever um, lick your thread in order to thread the needle because it's going to rust your needles. And I'm thinking, man, I, I don't know if I could do it without it. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's it. Maybe you might have a good, good point there, Sharon. I probably, when I did the webcam the other day, trying to use it for a Zoom call, I bet you I put it back on there upside down. Oh, well. Not going to worry about it. While I'm actually stitching, it doesn't matter. Thank you, Jude. I love my green. Every room in the house, that was the last bit of renovation we finished. Not that the renovation is done, but the last bit we finished was um, getting my husband's office painted. And that was the last room that didn't have any paint on it yet. I know. I know. Crazy, right, Victoria? Don't lick your throat. Maybe people were like, you know, slobbering all over their needles. I don't know. So today, six years ago today, we learned that the seller of this house accepted our offer on it. And we, because um, we, oh, it, was, it was a stressful time whether or not we were going to be able to get this house. We were looking at it. In the pouring rain, we had two days to look at it, and all the offers had to be in on a Tuesday, and they were going to decide on Wednesday who got the house. And you know, we just we didn't know. We did. We gave our best offer. They weren't going to do any negotiating. It was like put in your best offer while you have it, and that's it. You have no second chances. And uh, we put in a letter from Zoe talking about our dog and how, you know, she needed more space to run in the native garden and all that stuff. And we were walking Zoe when we got the call from the real estate agent that we got the house. And I remember kind of letting up a little scream and dropping my phone. And Yeah. I love it against, I love the green against the timber. The, the wood ceilings really sold us on the house. Although we did have to replace it with a different wood in the bedroom because it was, it had kind of gone gone a weird orangey color and it's funny we had a light green in our other house 
and we loved the green. It was just perfect in that house. And we thought for sure we were just going to do the same shade of green here. Boy, this is really wonky stitching. <laughs> And we brought the green samples over and we tried them on the walls and it looked hideous. It was just not, the, the light is completely different over here than it was at our other place. And we went, you know, I love this bright and I wasn't sure that my husband would go for it and he loved it too. And in fact, he was the one that helped me understand that of all that we, we auditioned like 20 shades of green. And this was the one that stayed green in every room of the house and every time of day, it always looked green. Yeah, green was just neutral to me when I was younger. I don't know, maybe it's just when I got really into gardening and stuff. Boy, this is, oh my goodness, so wonky, so wonky. Wonky is good. Wonky stitches don't matter. They're going to be out of alignment. It's not going to matter. It's all going to be masked in there and it's not going to matter. I have to keep telling myself. Green belongs in the garden and on the trees. <laughs> well, what I love here, you can kind of see behind me here, windows. And eventually, next year, hopefully, we'll be able to get rid of all the grids and just have them um, picture windows. But I'm sitting here in an L of windows. There's, you know, one, two, three windows down one side, whoops, and then like five windows down the other side. So when we were painting the green, or when we want to look at the green, uh, one of the cabin guys that was here, he's like, well, that's just going to bring the outside in. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what I want. It, the outside in. And so it feels like you're, you know, right here in the trees with us. Your heart had wonky stitching. You were okay with it. Yes. I love the wonky too. Just, you know, sometimes while you're doing it, sometimes you kind of go, uh, whoops, you know, I wish it was nice and precise, but I have never been nice and precise about anything in my life. I don't know about you, but I have never been nice and precise. Kryptonite green was almost fluorescent. Oh, wow. I wanted to paint my room purple. Purple was my favorite color as a kid. And I was not allowed to paint my room purple. We just had white walls everywhere. But I did have a purple full fur bedspread. For the longest time yeah i love purple and orange and i'm you know i'm just kind of okay with it and i like purple and orange together from doing like mixed media stuff and i didn't really i wasn't crazy about i mean i like to be outside but it wasn't like i was nuts about nature when i was younger i wished that i had had that sort of thing i'm kind of jealous of people that can trace their love of nature back to childhood I can't really trace much of anything that I do artistically back to my childhood. You know, it was all about books for me, which was why writing, you know, as a writer, I could say, you know, I could trace all of that back to, to childhood. But yeah, we go with what makes us happy, however we're creating Sharon says, I've always loved nature, but I'm not sure I've always known it. You know, that's very true. Good point. Penelope says, I love the look of or organic look of wonky stitching. Yeah, it's obviously not done by a machine. Oh, Janet. Yeah, maybe I can't trace anything artistically back to childhood because I was dealing with other stuff and how. Wow. That is deep, Janet. And books have had led me led me to where I am now. Yeah, I am. Um, I wrote a lot of journals and letters to myself and letters to people that I didn't know when I was a kid, and that did lead me to write. And I read constantly. Love that, Mona. Yes, do what makes your heart sing. A quote, wonderful quote by Marianne Williamson, who you know you sometimes find yourself quoting her entire books. You know, and we can say that we don't want to have to deal with the crappy stuff that we've had in our past, but it's that crappy stuff that we've made it through the other side that's made us the person we are now. And I think going through my crap and coming out the other side and feeling stronger helps me be able to then be strong for other people. 
Exactly. Read constantly to know what it feels like to be somebody, what it felt like to be somebody else. Yeah. And I wrote so that I could explore that sort of thing. I'm going to tie that off now, even though I've got some thread left, just because I'm afraid I'll run out midway. And I mean, one of the last books that I published was about a girl that, you know, her, her mom was thinking about leaving her dad. Well, her mom did leave her dad and she was wondering if her dad was going to leave her too. And that was because, you know, I never knew my dad and I had a lot of issues that I needed to deal with with that. When I finished that book, I sort of felt like I had, um, had healed myself. Came through the other side a lot stronger. I didn't need to, to know him, even though I later then found another family of his and a whole bunch of other stuff. I'll have to tell that story another time. Rescuing field mice. I did. I rescued a bunny and I rescued, I think, a couple of birds, but we were never allowed to keep them around. Writing is escapism. Mm. Sad times as a child, Adele. A lot of us had different. Read the book Motherless Dog. Oh, yeah, that was a hard one. That was definitely a hard book. I remember that. Yeah, and, you know, I didn't cry a lot in my childhood, you know, about the big things like that. I mean, I guess it would have been worse had I my father stuck around and we'd gotten to know him. I'd gotten to know him. I mean, it was just me and my mom and then me and my mom and my grandmother um, but he took off before I was born and never wanted anything to do with me. And so <laughs> I, I got what you meant, Sharon. Yeah, reading is escapism. And so as a kid, I was always looking for him. Wait a minute here. Janet says, I've learned how to do the quilter's knot to put a knot at the end of your thread. Oh, uh, wait a minute. I'm going to need to... Learn more about that one, Janet. That sounds like something I need. You didn't either until you had your first daughter. Yeah. It. Um... All right, Janet, I'm going to have to go look that one up or send me a link. I am me a link of, of something about it so I can learn how to do a quilter's knot. Maybe Jude or Mona can find a link for us about a quilter's knot and share it with us here. Yeah, the hard thing is that the stuff that hits us in childhood, you know, we, we keep telling those stories to ourselves over and over again. Ah, uh, Victoria, we would take those hugs. You know, and, and I try not to feel bad because I didn't have a bad childhood. I just had a missing piece of it. And I just wanted all the answers and nobody could ever tell me any answers. And then when I was all grown up, I and I wrote that book and doing some research, um, a friend helped me track down the fact that my dad had had more kids with other women. And I've been in touch with several of them. And some of them actually knew the man. And oh, thanks, Janet. Oh, good. And then Jude posted something for us. You know, and it turns out that I, I wasn't missing anything. And I'm glad that I didn't have that. But we carry those stories with us and we keep telling them over and over again until we start to believe that they're the way we're supposed to be. And we need to shake those old stories off. Hey, Took. Hi. Yeah, I would not be able to watch and then type from the phone. That would be tough. Okay, well, I'm going to go check that one out then because I knew there were other ways to do it, the knotting and the weaving back when they're done so that you don't have all that bulky stuff underneath. I'm not that good yet. 
But that's the whole idea of showing up here and doing this stuff even when I'm not that good. All right, you guys were right. The contrasting color is good. It's going to totally change the look of this piece. And now I know as I work my way up that the sky is going to have varying shades of blue. Thank you, Adele. Yeah, it, it definitely makes the contrast helps. Victoria says we can all be a part of, of her family. You guys love adopting extra members. That's awesome. Well, I love the family that we're building here. This is the Wednesday family, and I just really love it. <laughs> Jude, <laughs> you are my best cheerleader. So I don't know. Maybe I'll – no, I'm not going to – I'm telling myself I'm going to finish the stitching, and then I'm going to sell just the piece. I'm not going to make it into a journal cover. I will sell the piece. Somebody else can either put it on the wall or put it into a journal or make a page, make a fabric book. I'm really, 2021 is going to be finishing stuff and a variety of stuff. I um, One of the other struggles that I've had recently is that I came to YouTube via junk journaling. And I quickly discovered that the junk part of it wasn't as appealing to me as the paper part of it because I love paper. And... I felt like, oh, I don't fit in. You know, again, it's the, the fitting in and doing the rules like everybody else is doing things, you know, because I'm not doing the junk. But then I realized that I didn't want to only talk about journals. I didn't want to only make journals. I love to make all kinds of different art. And so, again, I started beating myself up thinking, oh, man, you know, I'm not doing, you know, these people that have these dedicated channels to doing just this one type of art. And I finally had to tell myself, you know, last night after having a long talk with a friend and I'm going to have another talk tonight with another friend who's also a coach, you know, doing me, just me is fine. And if there aren't any rules yet in place for doing the kind of channel that I want to do, then I'll just make my own rules up as I go along. Yeah, they can do that. I mean, they might take it, somebody else might take it and make it into a larger wall hanging, you know, and expand the piece. Or it might become one square on a quilt, or it might become a cover of a book or a page in a book. Oh, that's something else I want to do next year is my fabric book. Yeah, Jana, give yourself permission to do whatever kind of craft you're doing at the moment. But, you know, we, we want to we want to feel like we fit in. And I felt like I had a little obligation because it was the junk journaling community that sort of introduced me to things. And I know a lot of you originally from different, um, you know, junk journaling groups, Penny. <laughs> thank you. Penny says, I must let go. My art is unique and special. Thank you so much. I'm going to come back later and jot that down because that just really fills my heart. Jude, you agree with Penny, Margaret? Yeah, one more than just one thing or is necessary because otherwise everything gets boring. That's true, Sharon. I mean, the beauty of the channel is you don't like the channel, you leave, you go someplace else. And that's the other thing that I've had to be working on accepting is like there's going to be changes. There's going to be people that will say, well, she's not doing blah, 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 so I'm not interested. So fine, go move along. I'm going to try very hard not to look at the vanity metrics. I really am. Let's see, I think I can get one more row of this dark brown. So, Janet, you think maybe that's why you were drawn here, because you fit in. I, I like that idea. Um, I connected with you very quickly because we had like-minded ideas and variety and big hearts. Yeah, Victoria says a good 80% of your journals are not junk-related as all because I use a lot of digital kits and normal printer papers. I guess the only junk, junky part is how I make the covers. Yep, and the covers aren't junky. Your covers aren't junky. Sharon says, for me, making journals has incorporated so many arts and crafts that I've previously done <clears throat> that I've dabbled in or on or that I want to try and perhaps not on just such a large scale. Exactly. 
that's a great way. Journal covers are a great way to experiment with things like mixed media. Nothing has to be a masterpiece. Yep. Victoria says, I watch a lot of people who don't watch me or my channel, and that does not bother me in the slightest. Sharon says, I love channels that have variety. It sparks my own creative thinking and gets me out of the box. Yep. Yeah, and then you start, you know, you watch something that's totally different, and then you start getting all the different suggestions, and it sends you down all these rabbit holes. Oh, thank you, Nettie. Nettie says, just be you, Susan, because we love you for you. Thank you. I love you, too. Tammy, yikes, you broke your dominant arm. You can't craft or write. Oh, my goodness. That, that would be so hard. That would be so hard to not be able to do that. Creativity is a release and can make you go places you didn't think you would go to in your own style and concept. You're right, Jude. Very well said. Ah, reusing packaging, yeah. And bedding, yep. I mean, I could have made all my fabric that I dye just with old bedding, with old sheets. I wish that I hadn't sent so much off to uh, recycling. Margaret says, I've moved away from junk journaling to some extent, though I still like using junk mail up in journals as much as possible. Yeah, I, get, I think that's it. It's a, it opened a door for a lot of us, and then we can move on. I tell you guys, having this big monitor in front of me so that I can see the chat directly as I'm working, this is awesome. I feel like I've missed out on so much chat in the past because I was trying to turn back and forth and I don't have to feel like I'm catching up on chat. I can see immediately as it comes up. Well, Tammy, I guess you'll have a lot of time to watch videos while you're recovering. That just stinks. I have a whole shelf of books um, that the cover fabric is on and I've got to start putting the pieces together. Yeah, I think it's it's a I think it's gonna work, Sharon. I do. I think the setup's gonna work. I just need to figure out because you're looking at the side profile. It might be nicer if you could actually see me facing forward. So I need to move something so that um so that I can have the iPad facing the same way as the big monitor is. And if I do that. Uh, then you'll be seeing me face on rather, although that might be kind of scary, but you'll see me face on as opposed to a side profile. Yeah, that's what I wanted, that feeling like we're all hanging out personally. And I'm sorry it took me so long to get to it, but I'm glad I finally got here. That's what I wanted to. And thank goodness the iPad seems to work out well. Yeah, and I haven't even, now that I've got the big monitor and I haven't even started the editing my digitals on it, um, I have to, I need to go get a new mouse, wireless mouse, and I think that's going to be awesome. We all, Penny says, we all have elements in common that tie us together, but it's a unique creativity within us. We are with our people. It would be boring if we all produced the same old, same old. Exactly. Exactly. And yes, what... Um, Jude said, Adele, do it your way. Absolutely do it your way. Well, and the thing is, you know, I could put together a kit, okay, where we all had the same images. Let me move this over here. We all had the same images. We all had the same fabric. We all had the same threads. I could send you guys all the exact same kit and say, make something with it. And it would all come out completely different. Yeah, I think I just need to put the um, put the iPad on the other side of the big monitor. Right now, it's up against my one of my lights. I just need to take something else big off my desk, and I think it's going to work out great. So you might see me. Some of you might see me pop back on for a test a little bit later. And I feel like we're hanging out here in person a lot more this way too. So. I did not put on any makeup for you guys. Sorry, I love you, but not that much. I did put earrings in. I thought, well, that I can do some of that. You make things with plaster. Ooh, I have been exploring some um, ideas with plaster by watching some videos, and I need to, uh, 
I, I need to find some time to play around with that some more because I love the plaster effects. Do you make journals with plaster? Victoria, yes, you're right. Like the team, um, when they when they all took the same kit and they all went off in their own direction. And so we got these wonderfully unique, you know, projects. Everybody started with the same thing. So you couldn't be the same, even if you were trying. I mean, unless you were doing mass production kind of stuff, and none of us want that. You make statues and artwork. Ah. Oh. Thank you, Jude. Yeah, it's funny. Um Victoria says, what's makeup? After I did that Pinterest video, which was the first one that where I was on camera for the whole thing, I actually did go out and buy a little bit of, you know, bought some mascara and some powder, and I thought I would do that. And no, it's probably going to go in the box to my daughter because I'm not going to use it. Yes, Margaret says, I don't think I'll ever stop making books of one sort or another, and you're learning a lot of different bindings with Robin McClendon. Oh, good. Um, yeah, I think I'm going more to, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to stop making journals because I've got a stack of them to finish up. Uh, but I'm also going more towards artist books, which will be fewer pages and more artistically minded, more conceptual, I think. Well, congratulations, my turn. That's fabulous. Yeah, makeup is overrated. I agree was so important when we were teenagers though, right? <laughs> At least to me, I thought it was. And I um, I have rosacea, which would really be irritated by a lot of makeups. And I just finally got it, you know, a little bit more under control where I'm not having flare ups all the time, which was one of the reason I, you know, wasn't on camera for quite a while because it was kind of embarrassing to be 60 years old and have a face full of pimples like when I was in high school. Actually, it was worse because I didn't have it bad when I was a kid. But um, yeah, so I like a little bit of mascara just so my eyes don't disappear. Now that everything's going gray, my um, my eyelashes and eyebrows are kind of light. Thirty-one days of vlogging for yeah, yeah. Makeup is definitely overrated in my book too. You know, so but you deal. You know, we deal with the self-esteem. We deal with the makeup, and I deal with the weight. Um, hopefully, you guys next year you will start seeing less of me. I mean, I have lost fourteen pounds so far since my doctor gave me some test results that were not good. <laughs> I look normal. Good. Yeah. I used to, I, I did. I used to like the mascara though for my eyes because my eyelashes are so light, but then, you know, I would wear the makeup for just like an hour or two and then you have to deal with taking it off and then the irritation that would always happen on my skin and blah, too much, too much time in things when I would rather be making art. You can't stop touching your face and makeup out the window. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad you guys suggested the contrasting threads. This is a lot nicer. I like this a lot. It's going to make it pop. I'm always messing with my hair, although there's a lot less of it uh, since I got it cut. Yeah, my skin, just not a fan of makeup. And uh, really, for a few years, oh, dear, that knot didn't get in there, right? You better tie this down. Um, for a few years, my skin was so broken out and I was on antibi antibiotics all the time. And that made me nervous because what if I got sick and I needed antibiotics for other stuff and my body would have built up such a resistance. But the last batch back in April, I think was the last time, knock on wood, that I had a flare up. And now I just have to deal with slightly rosy cheeks and that's fine. <laughs> it just looks like I've been out in the cold. Yeah, my daughter really likes the makeup, too. That's great, Victoria. Yeah, it helped you get over the confidence or get the confidence to, to get over putting yourself on camera. And I think, like, I looked at a couple of my older videos the other day. For some reason, somebody had asked me a question. And I was looking at a video from, like, over a year ago. And I tell you, it makes you almost want to go back and take them all off, even though that's your growth. 
Um, and I just need to remember people don't normally go, oops, I don't want that color. It's time to move to the darker color. I don't have room for three more lines here. Um, you know, the growth, it's good. The growth is really good. Oh, this one's not good. This thread is going to be hard to get through the needle, I bet. It's kind of, yeah. I need to get my thread conditioner over here. Yeah, it's just the more we do anything, the more confident we're going to get. Heck, I think for I, years ago when I first started going to lives, I was never brave enough to even chat in lives. It's like, why does that matter? Nobody can see me in a chat. Why should that matter? But I would be so shy that I couldn't even chat in a live stream. How crazy is that? I love the lives and there's an interesting concept that came up in a chat in somebody else's live the other day it was talking about, um, again, talking about building a business and whether doing live streams for free would keep people down the road. If you wanted to build some kind of a business that was going to charge like for, I don't know, something, I don't know, there's something about like giving it all away for free would keep people from buying from you later. I, like I said, I just got very frustrated with the whole thing and decided I'm just going to have to do me, just do me. I love the lives. I love getting together with you guys every week, even if I don't know what I'm going to work on. Um, maybe I'll get better at that. Maybe I won't. I don't know. So you kept Vlogmas and craft related videos separated this year and Vlogmas is doing that with regard to views. Yeah, I'm, I am trying not to look at views because my views have been way, way down. So evidently um, I'm not putting up the kind of videos that the people that are currently subscribed to want to, to see. And that's okay. I'm figuring me out and I'm just going to have to keep going on figuring me out and hope that the right people find me over time. Yeah, Sharon, it's too restrictive to worry about being judged and we really need to get over ourselves, right? Uh, when I would speak, okay, back when I was writing and I would do my public speaking, um, somebody gave me some advice and they said, you know, they're not expecting you to go out there and fail. They're expecting you to go out there and be a success. So just act like you already are there. And I really try to remember that all the time. But it's hard because you think, well, what I do isn't like somebody else does. And then they're going to think, well, why isn't this more like somebody else's? And we forget about the wonderful uniqueness that draws us. I mean, we all love slow or many of us love slow stitching, but we don't do it the same way. We love mixed media, but we don't do it the same way. Crafting and talking at the same time you get caught up in what you're creating. The words get lost. Yeah. That, and, I, and I think I have the potential for the voiceovers to work better for me. I just need to, um, I need to get out of my own way. Number one. Hey, Lori. Hi, it's okay. You're here now and I get to say hello to you and that makes me happy. Um, shoot, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, the, the voiceovers. Yeah, I, I think that the potential is there to do well with voiceovers. I just need to go about the whole thing a little bit differently than I did this last one. You know, it's less hard for me to put my face out there in video because I was used to the public speaking. It's more hard for me to put my art out there because uh, not having any formal training, not really taking any classes except for recently some online classes, um, I've never considered myself an artist. And so to, to put my stuff out there and say, well, I'm an artist and you should watch this and see what I'm doing feels very uh, presumptive of me. And I've never been good at standing out there and saying, look at me, even though I really like the attention. I mean, let's face it, you know, a lot of times we're doing this because we like the attention and I do. Sharon says, I uh, was so overwhelmed about being out there when I first started a channel, you almost quit. Yeah, completely uncomfortably, overwhelmingly out of your comfort zone. Yep. And, and that's the way it is for a lot of us. And some people still only share with, you know, not talking. They just do the music. That works for them. Uh, 
Penny, oh yeah, it's a tough year and whether that affects my channel or not, I mean, I, I, I need to, in some ways, okay, it's hard to say, but you need to just be selfish in the regard of I'm doing my channel for me and I'm glad that a lot of people are enjoying it, but I, I am not going to fall into the trap that I was a year ago, which was what video does everybody want to see? And that's maybe not the way that traditionally people would build a business. But, you know, I've had lots of businesses. I had a 30-year career as a writer. I worked in corporate. I've had other jobs. This is my love. This is retirement. This is what I'm doing to, to fill my heart and soul in, in the later years of my life. I'm going to go about it differently. Nettie, absolutely. I'd rather have a small, close group that is real. Well, you know, and, and somebody said, I think it was Lennon in one of his, his chats, you know, so so what if you had a million followers? What would you do with them? You couldn't interact with a million followers. You know, you couldn't get real and authentic with a million followers. You would still have that group within a group. Art is very personal, says Victoria, as it comes from deep within us. It doesn't have to be paint or drawings to be art. Yep. Anything that we're time we're creating something out of nothing. I mean, our gardens are art. The way we decorate our homes. Some of, a lot of people like to have a, a table where they put together a, a tablescape of flowers and vases and sculptures. You know, art is all around us. Sharon says she's grateful she stuck with her channel. Some videos are still difficult, not because of what I'm creating, but because I'm still out of my comfort zone. Yep, it helps you grow. Absolutely. Margaret says when COVID's over, she's going to offer mixed media classes at her village adult education center. That's awesome. You feel confident enough to do that now. Jude says what drew me to Susan was a realism, genuine love for her art and her creativity along with her art. Thank you, Jude. Oh, and yeah, Victoria, people that tell someone like Gail that she inks too much, it's her project. Exactly. Hey, Donna, I was talking about you earlier. Did you hear me? I was telling how you helped me over a rough spot yesterday. I woke up feeling very, very good today. You... Diane, you're just getting started and you're having trouble getting started. You always taught classes, but YouTube's out of your comfort zone. Ah, uh, well, you just need to do some, you know, one-on-ones maybe. You know, set up a private live stream sometime and let me know when you're going to be there and I'll hang out and you can just kind of practice like that. Gadgety Mouse, last week you found us with one minute left. This week you have 10 minutes. <laughs> well, depending, I might just keep stitching here for a little bit. Sharon says, I started my channel because I wanted a way to share and connect with the crafting community I suddenly discovered. Yeah, the YouTube family, the, the love in the YouTube family is amazing to me. And when you find your tribe, when you find the people, like a lot of us maybe aren't watching all of the same people we first subscribed to. You know, we bounce around until we find where it feels comfortable. And I'm just tickled to death that there are some of you that are still hanging out with me that have been hanging out with me for a while because you find it comfortable here. That just makes me so happy. And it tells me that I'm doing what's right for me. Took says listening and reading is making your heart grow that you love this conversation so much. See, and, and you telling me that took is making my heart grow. So guys, Junk Journal Ideas, that is a channel. If you have not checked it out, if you don't know about it, you need to go check out Donna's channel. You want tutorials? You want to get started in making journals? Adele, if you're still here and you have not checked out Donna's, uh, Donna's channel, you need to go check that one out because she's going to walk you through all the steps of getting started. And then you're going to take that knowledge and you're going to twist it up and do it your way. You don't try and, you know, do exactly the same thing. You do it your way. Donna's also got a wonderfully supportive Facebook group. So, you know, I, I highly recommend both subscribing to her channel and joining her group. And all those tutorials I thought I was going to do someday. I don't have to do them because Donna does them instead. <laughs>
It's a new setup. You can't hear people. Okay, wait a minute. First, Jude, is that Donna's channel, I hope? Um, you cannot hear the people in the background that are talking. Are you supposed to be able to hear them? Lori, they're not talking. They're typing their chat. So if you don't have live chat on, you're not going to be seeing the chat. And I'm just reading them so that for the replay, I make sure that um, people understand what because not everybody puts the chat up in the replay. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Jude put Donna's YouTube channel up there. So please go check it out. If you're not already a subscriber, I really recommend subscribing. And on her channel, she's got the information about her Facebook group. And she is a wealth of information and really for getting going on junk journals. I, she's always the first people I tell people to go watch. Nettie, thank you. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of what it is for me too. I feel like I found my space via junk journaling and I'm not turning my back on it, but I realized the junk part never appealed to me. The journal making always appeals to me because once a writer, always a writer. So books are, are a big deal. But yeah, you're stuck with me, Nettie. You know that. You are so stuck with me, girl. How is your December daily going? Diane, it's kind of funny that you're having camera issues. I'm sorry. You know I love you. <laughs> but you you get so much. You do so many other techie things. I'm sorry that you're struggling. I just want you to get get yourself out there. You you need to do that. I'm poking myself with this needle. I don't want to bleed all over this fabric. Yeah, the connection outweighs the fear. Sharon, you got it. That's what it's all about. Once you find, okay, I got to remember to turn my chair to the other direction here. I'm definitely going to do a little play with my camera setup. Yeah, it's when you find the people that will support the way you want to grow your art, um, it's amazing. Like I said, I'm, I'm taking a couple of these classes, and one of them I'm learning a lot of technical stuff, which is really good because it's gonna, it's forcing me to do a lot of art studies, which since I never went to art school, I didn't do any of that kind of stuff. And just kind of experimenting with a lot of different materials to learn more about what I like more. The other one is teaching me how to cultivate an art practice to live a creative life. Ah, uh, thanks Jude, appreciate the plug there. And I think both of those lessons are important for me. And I don't think I was ready for them a year ago. I wasn't ready to dedicate myself some time every day to um, growing my art. I was just sort of doing the same old things all the time because it was safe. You know, and when it's safe, um, we don't tend to grow as much when it's safe. You need to go out to the scary parts, out of the comfort zone. There's, um, shoot, there's a quote about, you know, all the good fruit is at the far end of the branch. I don't remember exactly how it is, but all the good fruit is at the far end of the branch. And we need to go out there in order to get it. And also that we are not going to bloom into the creative beings that we want to be. Oh, darn, I hate it when that happens. Um, we're not going to bloom into the creative people that we want to be until we uh, th the idea of staying where we are becomes more uncomfortable than the fear of growing. Yeah, I have a leather thimble around here somewhere, but thus far in the cleanup process, I have put it someplace very safe, so safe that I can't find it. Oh, this one's not going to be good for rethreading. I don't know how many times this happens is that I lose the needle, the thread in the needle, just the like the one stitch before I'm going to cut it off. All right, let's do this. So if I stitch another row, should you guys want to hang around a little bit more? Or should I call it? I can go either way. Let's see if I can get one more row done. 
<sighs> so what is Sharon says, I've learned so much about my own creativity the past couple of years. Oops, I gotta go this way for you guys to see it the right way. The background noise of life blocks my creativity. I need to push that to the background before your creativity can be released. Gadgety Mouse, yeah, this is my time. Um, you know, rest of December, January, next year, this is me. I will be here at this time every, every week. Uh, noon California time, PST, whatever that translates to. Yeah, my time, I realize I need a tremendous, whoops, that's the wrong color, isn't it? I need a tremendous amount of quiet in order to create. And I'm having to make some adjustments because now my husband's working from home and I'm hopey, hoping that he will continue working from home because I love that. Uh, but I need to figure out how to get to my happy, quiet place. I can't wear headphones and earphones all the time. It, uh, the weight of it on my head just bothers me. So really trying to, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that I can overcome that and practice just doing, you know, working and recording without voiceover, you know, and do the voiceover later, you know, without talking. And I did that, you know, when I did the wall hanging, I managed to do it while he was working and having his meetings and talking and all that kind of racket. So I just needed to then find the time for the voiceover after. So I, you know, I'm just going to have to practice. And I think that's what it all comes, you know, we expect so many things to be easy. Hey, Jody. Welcome. We have a couple of other people here from Australia and New Zealand. Happy to have you here. You know, but nothing about art is easy. It might feel easy in the moment because it's something we love doing. But, you know, it's it's not always easy and we shouldn't expect it to be easy. I shouldn't say that nothing about it is easy because there's some stuff that does come easy for some of us. Um, but maybe it's because it's the stuff we absolutely love. And maybe if it's something that doesn't come easy and we're fighting it and we're miserable when we're doing it, maybe we need to take another look if there's something, another way we can approach that so that we love it more. Smooth jazz for creating. You know, I didn't use, I didn't used to be able to write to music, or yeah, I couldn't write to music. Blah. I need to hydrate, right? I need somebody to remind me. Uh, sorry about that. So when I was writing, um, I could not write to with music on. I could clean with music on. I'd have to have some good old rock and roll from like the 60s to really get into it. But uh, I discovered when I was working on a really hard book that certain classical music really did it for me. But then I would need to have a long period of quiet afterwards. And to be honest, I have not tried arting to music for quite a while. So I might try and do that. I might see if um, some jazz or some classical music in the background would help. But usually that stuff gets in the way in my head. You know, I start listening to the music and I get into, I definitely couldn't listen to anything with lyrics. That would totally throw me off. Yeah, I, you know, and I might just need to see if I can retrain my brain, Jude. I mean, I think we can do that if something matters to us enough. We can retrain our brains. Okay, I would like to get one more row of the dark here. Oh, you're crazy like a lot of things, but that's okay. That's I love you're crazy. You know that. Yeah, so I, I'm thinking maybe, maybe some music. Maybe we just need to experiment with some different types of music. Um, I've got my classical playlist, and I've got <laughs> still got to figure out this camera setup. Um, some jazz. We've got some really good jazz, or even just like nature sounds. Ooh, I have a whole CD. I think of nothing but rushing water and birds and crickets and that kind of stuff. I might try that one too. That might help me drowned out the sound of meetings. Yeah, if I'm cleaning the studio or, you know, cleaning house, uh, I like to have music that's got lyrics so that I can, you know, get all crazy. 
heavy metal. I couldn't do the heavy metal. I'm old. <laughs> Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm getting excited about this now. I'm going to go look and what we have. Um, my husband digitized all our CDs for us. And I got to go look through our catalog and see what we have. I think the nature sounds might be exactly, exactly what I need. Yeah, it's train, my, train your brain. Train your brain to help you out. I mean, really... You can train your brain in so many ways. I give myself sleep suggestions at night. Like I'm trying to figure out, I have an idea for another wall hanging, kind of using my cluster idea only on a larger scale. And I give myself sleep suggestions before bed. I'm, I'm saying, okay, so now you've got this background. Now what are you going to put on top of that? And I try to actually visualize it. And then while I'm sleeping, my brain works on it for me. And I wake up and it's like, oh, let's go try that. Yeah, I agree, Jude. No lyrics. I think the lyrics would get in the way. Now, I can't listen to anything like that to go to sleep because I don't want to um, I don't want to miss the sound of the owls. We often have the owls hooting outside, and I love listening that to them just before sleep. And then we have, we think it's a raccoon. It could be a possum, but I think it's a raccoon. Almost like about midnight every night he pops over the fence and just kind of plops on the deck and the deck just like vibrates under the bed. And it's really funny. Oh, thank you, Margaret. I had a lot of fun doing that wall hanging and it was just, uh, it was one of those weird things that really did come out the way I had it in my head. I wished I thought to bring my mat over so I could show you guys what this looks like with the mat. But um, I might, I'll probably be working. I have, like I said, I've got like seven or eight of these things that are laid out and I just haven't started stitching yet. So I might be doing those for the next few weeks. Not going to start any new projects until I, well, I shouldn't say I'm not because you know me, I'm going to change my mind. <laughs> and that's going to be it. And then it's like, oh, wait a minute. I can't wait. I want to do this. Oh, well, Nettie, training your brain where you put stuff. Gosh, <laughs> shoot. <laughs> You are too funny. It is not straight. It is so wonky, and that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm embracing the wonky. My body is wonky. My stitches are wonky. <clears throat> my life is wonky, and that's the way I like it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right, we need just to fill in that <coughs> last little bit, even though that's probably going to be hidden under. Well, I don't know if this will be matted. Like I said, I'm just going to finish this and I'll put it out for sale and we'll see what somebody else does with it next. Yeah. Yeah. We're working <clears throat> in a live stream has gotten easier. At least I remember the first few I did, it was really hard to do any kind of work and chat at the same time. <clears throat> More water. Yeah, definitely need to figure out my, got the camera upside down, put the iPad back farther. Next week, we should be having an even better setup, but I'm glad you guys like the setup because this does feel a little bit more <clears throat> personal on my end. Bye-bye, Sharon. You take care. I'm so glad to see your smiling face. I know you were smiling in here. I'm almost done anyways. I'm just going to fill in this last little bit. See if I can do it with the thread that's still on my needle. Yeah. Oh, shiny ob object syndrome. Absolutely, Nettie. Absolutely. Just a couple more here. How can I sew and read without glasses, Jody says. Well, this, the stitching is right here, so it's pretty close. And I'm, I'm so far, my vision is still okay on this. It's not perfect, but it's okay. And I do have glasses um, for this close, but they're not. They, I think they need to be adjusted. But for the reading of the chat, I guess you weren't here when I was saying that. I'm so excited that um, my husband gave me his old monitor, and it's a big monitor, Um 
and it's sitting right in front of me here. So all I see on here, and I, I just extended my screen so I don't have to go back and forth to the little tiny chat over here on the right. I can look right in front of me here and I can see the chat and it's totally changed the way this is gonna be. I'm super excited. Heavy is laughing, yeah. <laughs> all right, I think other than fixing this little bit right here, I think this section is done. No, I might work on this tonight, or I might. Awesome hubby. Your hubby's laughing or my hubby's laughing? I know my hus husband has an awesome laugh. At our old house, when we would have the windows open, the neighbors would say, oh, I love to hear your husband's laugh. And if your husband's laughing, Jude, as long as you're not laughing at me, I'm okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing. And I like I, said, I have to get an, a mouse and then I'm going to be doing some editing on it. And I think it's going to really, yeah, my darling, he, he does. He laughs and I can't help but smile when he laughs because it just kind of gives me inside shivers, you know, the very best kind. All right. That'll tie that loose one down enough. So let's see what we have so far. So we've got the bottom. We'll go up the hills. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Victoria. There's a lot less of it now. I used to have the, the braids all the way down to my waist. So I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the graduated colors. Oh, now, okay, guys, give me a vote here before we sign off. Do I do graduated colors in each of these as well? Or do these maybe get just the solid colors? Because I really can't go any lighter than this as I'm going up. I can definitely do different shades of blue here, but I don't think I have enough different shades. I'll have to look through the rest of my threads. Yeah, that part of it, but then you know, there's the other part of it here that's very gray. <laughs> Eventually it'll all be gray, right? Gra so the same graduated like this in each block, okay. I can do that. And then maybe I can mix some different beiges and golds. That's green. And well, I could mix. Well, I don't want to introduce green. I think the green is going to be too much in here. But I could introduce some golds. Let's see. Okay. Well, I'm going to dig through my. I'm just not sure whether the browns work again. If I do the browns again up here, I could do the rustier color maybe. Let's see, what else do we have over here? Can you guys hear Zoe whining? <laughs> My husband's office door is closed and she's like, no, I want to go in there. I have another bed in there. So I get to the blues, that's going to be great. I have lots of different blues. All right, graduated colors. We'll see how far I get during the week or if I start something else and save this to work with you guys next week. But I can hear my voice is going, and I have a chat on the phone with somebody in two hours, so I'm going to have to go drink a bunch of tea. I am going to do... Um, Aurora asked me if I was going to do other stitches and I think I'm going to stick with just the straight stitches here just because I already started it. Uh, the next one that I do, you know, this was a project that I just got into this point of tacking things down and then I'm just going to do French knots in here. I just, I love French knots and I love masses of French knots. So I think I'm just going to do the straight stitches graduated in each of these. And then I'll do the French knots here. But then the next one I do, I want to do it more like a sampler where there's different stitches in each section. But I just love doing these little, these are not big pieces of fabric. I mean, this is just five by seven. And then, you know, these little strips that you just cut into curves. There's no pattern. You just cut them into curves and layer them up and you get this little landscape. 
I don't think I, yeah, I don't have any of my other ones there. Yeah, French, French knots, I add so much. So if you're looking for self-threading needles, go further up in the chat because Mona put a link in for us on that. And uh, Jude also got us a link on how to do the quilters knot so that we can um, get better at doing that knotting. And I guess I'm gonna go off and have some tea and I'm gonna work on this some more to probably tonight. And I will be back next week, noon, California time, PST. And thank you so much for hanging with me. Thanks for liking the new setup. And most of all, thanks for all the love you guys give to one another when you're here. I really appreciate that kind of support because it trickles out into our work and gives us the energy so we can go off and create something fabulous. Thanks for hanging with me, guys. I will see you next week. Bye-bye.